Oops. Now, the video tag is not going to be alone on the screen. Here I've added a few more things. Except from the video, though, there's no images on this screen. The heading here is web fonts, selectable fonts. The uh, graphics here is uh, SVG. And you can see that he, he nods in approval for WebM here. This is done with CSS uh, transitions. This is also CSS transitions down here. We can do a whole lot declaratively now without the need of, for JavaScript. There is some JavaScript here, though. You can see the national anthem has been, has been rendered at the bottom there. And that's done in the canvas element with a, a little JavaScript library to render, to render uh, musical notation. So all this is coming together now. Uh, we think that video, being a first-class citizen, will join the other content types that we have, and we will have very rich web pages in HTML and CSS3. My prediction is that we can, if we use these techniques right, we can get rid of half the images of the web, because they're mostly there for styling purposes. But by adding all this video stuff, the, 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 there's still going to be you know, lots of images out there. So to the web community, I'd like to say, start using this. We need to go out with our video cameras. We all have video cameras in our pockets. And we should, we should, we should do it. This guy in Germany just went to his local zoo and uh, filmed the octopus. Uh, and it's fantastic how this video presentation really uh, increases the educational value of Wikipedia or, or whatever kind of content you're, you're doing. The video uh, is truly uh, amazing. To Google. I'd like to say thank you. It's very civil of you to spend time and money uh, getting WebM off the ground, releasing it to the open. And I look forward to working with, video, uh, with, with Google in the future to make sure that the web remains open uh, to be used uh, for all sorts of browser with all sorts of content. At Opera, we put the web into uh, all sorts of phones. We are on hundreds uh, of different phone, phone sets, uh, reaching millions of people who would never otherwise have video access. And we truly believe uh, that web access is going to be one of the human rights of this century. Thank you. Thanks, Mike and Hakan. So it's really exciting. One of the core tenets which underlies the web success is that it's based on open standards like HTML, TCP, IP, JavaScript, etc. And it's great to see uh, video get that option as, uh, option as well. So for an effort like this to be successful, we really need the support of the entire industry to make this happen. So I guess I'm on the wrong slide. Um, so we've been reaching out to many, many partners. and. We've, we've received overwhelming support, so we're very grateful for that. Uh, I want to call out a few people. First of all, we wouldn't be able to do this today without the support of people like the open source efforts like Warbus and Thera. So we are very grateful to what they have done, and we are looking forward to working with them. <clears throat> Secondly, for VP8 and WebM to succeed, it's really important that we have hardware support especially given how many mobile devices are getting connected to the web and serving videos. So hardware acceleration is very, very important. And we are working with many, many hardware partners and publishers. You can see the names on the list. And we are working very hard to make a highly optimized RTL freely available soon to our hardware partners. So we've talked about HTML5 APIs, how modern browsers are supporting these APIs and given you examples of real-world applications. We have more examples on the way. But at this point, I would like to invite Kevin Lynch, CTO of Adobe. Adobe has been doing a lot of work to support HTML5, including providing tools which are really important for developers. So let me invite Kevin Lynch to the stage. Hey, Sadar. Thank you. Well, it's great to be with all of you here today at Google I.O. And um, HTML5 is great. It's a great move forward uh, for HTML on the web. And seeing the examples here this morning uh, was a lot of fun to see it coming along and seeing what's possible now uh, in HTML. And um, 
You know, at Adobe, we've been, for over 25 years now, enabling people to express themselves using a variety of technologies. Uh, and it's really fun to see new technologies come out like this that people can take advantage of in expressing themselves. And we're really excited to work on enabling that to happen. Um, of course, we work on a variety of technologies at Adobe. And um, today, though, I want to focus on HTML5 and what we're doing around uh, that technology. And I'm going to give you three examples of some of the work that we're doing uh, in support of HTML5. So the first thing I wanted to show you is what we're doing in Dreamweaver. And you know, Dreamweaver is the you know, most popular you know, pro uh, HTML editing tool uh, besides Notepad. And, um, and I'd like to show you some stuff we're doing in here. This is a website that we've mocked up. And, um, and one of the areas that we've been really looking at here in support of HTML is how do you actually do this with HTML5 across screens? Because now, obviously, we're all starting to target multiple devices. And so we're working here uh, with HTML5 and a new capability that we're adding to Dreamweaver CS5. And it's called multi-screen preview. And what this enables you to do is actually see a three-up of your website design so you can understand how it's going to look across these devices. And you can see right now, it doesn't look that good across uh, these devices. But you can use CSS, of course, to customize your design. So what we're doing is making it really easy to hook up alternate CSS-style uh, sheets based on media queries. And so for example, if I want to have a phone-sized one here uh, and a tablet-sized one, and maybe a desktop-sized one. I can set the width of each of these different uh, style sheets so that when it hits that width, it will show that particular uh, style sheet with the site. And then I'll press OK. And now you can see your design in three different formats. The same HTML5 code underneath, uh, but now you're able to see three different renditions with CSS. Um, and in fact, you know, doing this production right now, it's really hard to understand how your stuff's working. You have to keep trying in all these different devices. Um, we also support navigation here. So if I want to click, I can start playing through my site and see where I still need to work on my site some more. So this is going to be a big productivity increase for people trying to do HTML5 across devices. Now. Um, in addition to the HTML5 work across devices, you can also do um, code editing, code completion, you know, supporting things like the nav tag and other uh, areas of HTML5, but also doing CSS things. Uh, for example, when I'm changing this, this page here, and actually you can see it uh, changing between the different style sheets now, even live design view. So as you're editing the code, you can see the different views uh, live while you're doing it. And say I want to edit this tablet one, I can open up the CSS for it. And right now, uh, there's not much of an effect on these. Uh, but if I want to, I can actually make, uh, make this go bigger here if I want to. Let me get the tablet one. There we go. See, it's popping up right there, but it's not very smooth. And so if I can add, actually, transition. Part of uh, the new work that's going on in CSS is support for transitions. And you can see I've got code completion for all the new uh, attributes in CSS. So I can do a WebKit transition here. And if I want to make it uh, do, like, maybe uh, a half a second transition, um, I can go and roll over. And now you can see I get a smooth rollover rather than the jerky one from before. And so that's supporting all the new transition effects in CSS in live view inside Dreamweaver. So you can start editing. And of course, you know, this does uh, gradual enhancement as you have browsers that support these versus ones that don't. Uh, but it works consistently now uh, in the authoring tool. Now, the other thing that we've been looking at is how do we support enabling graphics uh, inside the authoring environment some more? And let me show you another page in the site. And this is a table that has some availability for uh, the one table that's in this cafe. And um, you can see it's booked or it's free. It would be better if I had a picture showing the availability here. So let's go over to Illustrator. And Illustrator already supports SVG. Uh, we're, in, we're working on some enhancements, though. And here's a graphic of a, a time clock. You know, it's just a bunch of shapes and colors. And I'm going to actually connect this with JavaScript and CSS and make it a dynamic clock that shows the free and busy times at the cafe. And to first uh, set the two different states, um, I'm going to actually select the fill color here in Illustrator. And from Illustrator, I'm going to create a CSS style. And this is going to represent the busy times. So I'll name it busy. And now I'm going to select this other one over here, the green one. And I'm going to make that a CSS style that says free. And now my JavaScript code can actually use those CSS styles and apply the right color to each of the different wedges. So let me export this as an SVG file. OK. Um, and now I'm going to be able to go back into Dreamweaver. And I'm going to be able to insert this on the page. So here's where that table is. And the JavaScript code reads the table and then updates the SVG based on that. So let's insert the SVG. So let's click Insert SVG. Let's go get my image. There's the clock. Import it. There's the object in SVG. And now when I go preview this inside of the browser, it should show the clock. 
So we've got the free busy times now showing with JavaScript, updating the SVG with CSS style sheets. And of course, it's showing the current time, too. Um, so that's an example of how we're working to smoothly integrate uh, graphics editing uh, and HTML5 together in a really seamless way. Um, this is something we're working on inside Illustrator.